Recall that neutron diffusion is governed by the equation 1 over v d phi dt equals nu sigma f phi minus sigma a phi minus db squared phi. Let's rearrange the diffusion equation by dividing by nu sigma f. When we do this, we get 1 over the velocity times nu times the fission cross-section times d flux dt. This is equal to 1 minus the absorption cross-section plus the diffusion coefficient times the buckling squared divided by nu sigma f, all multiplied by phi. Let's also define a unitless parameter, k, which we'll call the criticality or the multiplication factor, such that k equals nu sigma f divided by the absorption cross-section plus the diffusion coefficient times the buckling squared. When k equals 1, the system is exactly critical. As many neutrons are created in each generation as are destroyed, a reactor at a steady state power level once k equals 1. When k is less than 1, the system is called subcritical. More neutrons are being destroyed than are being created. A reactor that is shutting down is in this state. When k is greater than 1, the system is called supercritical. More tr neutrons are being created than are being destro destroyed. A reactor that is starting up is in this state. This particular representation of k is sometimes called the effective multiplication factor, or kf. This is because it takes into consideration the geometric characteristics of the core via the diffusion coefficient times the buckling squared leakage term. Substituting k back into the diffusion equation, we see that the right-hand side becomes 1 minus 1 over k times the flux, or k minus 1 divided by k times the flux. Now let's discuss a related unitless quantity called the reactivity, denoted by the Greek symbol rho. The reactivity represents changes in the multiplication factor with respect to an exactly critical system. Thus, the reactivity is equal to k minus 1 divided by k, or delta k divided by k. When rho equals 0, the system is exactly critical. When rho is less than 0, the system is subcritical. And when rho is greater than 0, it is supercritical. Thus, we can further recast the diffusion equation as 1 over the velocity times nu sigma f times d phi dt equals rho times the flux. Now, let's solve this equation for phi of t. To start, let's begin by dividing both sides by phi and multiplying both sides by dt. Rearranging the denominator from the left-hand side, we see that d phi divided by phi is equal to the velocity times nu sigma f times the reactivity times dt. Now we'll integrate both sides from time t equals 0 to time t. Thus, the left-hand side becomes the natural log of phi of t minus the natural log of phi at, at time t equals 0, which is equal to the velocity times nu sigma f times the reactivity times time t. Using log rules, we see that the natural log on the left-hand side becomes the natural log of phi of t divided by phi of 0. Exponentiating both sides, we see that phi of t divided by phi of 0 is equal to e to the v nu sigma f rho t. And thus, the flux as a function of time is equal to the flux at time 0 times e to the v nu sigma f rho t. From here we can define the prompt period t, which has units of seconds, as 1 over v nu sigma f rho. 
This in turn allows us to define the mean neutron generation time, L star, as the prompt period times the reactivity, or 1 over V nu sigma F. The mean neutron generation time represents the average time between neutrons being produced and consumed. It is effectively the response time of the system.